let's look at a practical example of how we can use vector math in Maya to place a pole vector so that the IK so that the joints don't move. Right? So I've got this little setup here and basically you can see if I move away here I've got a copy of the mesh just kind of templated so that we can see where it should be. Now if I apply an IK handle to this you can see that it goes off the original position and we don't want that. Now fair enough this is kind of rigged up poorly and different things but at any time when you're dealing with an IK that's at an angle like this you're going to have a bit of an issue if you just like try and eyeball where you need to place the IK. Now to get the IK perfect what we really need to do is we need to figure out sort of like the plane that goes through these joints because that's basically what we need to do is we need to have this locator this kind of pole vector that we're going to be use it needs to be in the same line as the as the kind of like plane that these joints go through so let me just kind of show that quickly by adding in a plane right so if i just scale that up you can see that this is basically where we want this um these joints to kind of like move in so if we actually just take this pole vector and we place it anywhere on this this plane you know, i can just hide this now uh, so if we now add to our ik and if we take this and we add that in as a pole vector you can now see that they're matching perfectly right but we don't want to sit down and do this manually for every kind of character or like IK setup that we need to do. So we want to find out how we can automate this. And that's basically where vector math come in. Because that can basically help us figure out this movement here. So what we want to try to do is basically we need to figure out a way of almost kind of like that plane or like that angle. So looking at this, what we can do is that if we figure out the vector that goes in between these points right so that we're right in between here that's kind of like one part of it then we have a place for that plane to kind of rotate around so we know that it needs to be in line with these two and we also need to figure out that it needs to kind of rotate towards this so if we find that midpoint and then go from that midpoint up here Basically then, that's sort of us creating that plane with vector. So if we do that, and then we aim that back, let me just do that for you now really quick here. So, uh, let me just hide these. So if I do this vector, right? Um, basically a line now, and if I scale that, just very simply down to zero point, 0 0.5 and what we can now do is if we make a line from that point to this point and then we make sure that we oh, if I can just snap that yep so if we now scale this out and if we place our locator on that line and let me just get back all of this. So let's try this now by doing that. And if we now add that in as a constraint, you can now see that works perfectly as well. Because what we've really done is with these curves, with these vectors basically, right? We've determined that direction that we need to be in. So how do we actually do that with math? Let me just undo this a bit so that we're back here and I'll just place this in some completely random place. Well, basically we just have to do exactly what we did now, right? We have to figure out the vector between here, scale it, and figure out the vector between that point and the elbow and scale that out and that's where we need to place our locator. So let's go over that now. So I've just got some code here already going. 
where I've um, basically got the name of the joints, so arm, elbow, and then wrist. And I'm basically using, again, the M vector class, and I'm just using the commands to pipe that straight in there. So the, when we now have this, right, we have those values immediately, and I'm also making sure that I'm querying in world space so that I get those absolute values. So what we really want to do first is that we need to figure out the vector between these two, right? So let's just call that arm to wrist. And as we talked about previously, if we want to get that the, ve the vector from one object to another, we will start at the last one and we'll subtract. So we'll do wrist position minus arm position. And let me just add in commands x form pv, and then we can use translate here. So let's just see what's actually happening. So if we look at this, we can now see that the vector that we're getting is in a downward angle like that. So let's just double check the vector that we already have, or like the curve. If we place that back at the origin, we can see that, yep, that looks like it's lining up nicely. So what we need to do now, right, is we need to scale this. So we'll just say arm to wrist scaled. I'm going to make, make my variables and my code very verbose here just to really step through what's happening. So we'll just take arm to wrist and we'll divide it by two. Right, so if I just do that, you can see again. I'm not sure if you caught that, but if you look at the, the vector here now, you can see that basically goes halfway up. Cool, so that all looks like it's working okay. So what we need to do now is we need to figure out this midpoint. So let's just call that midpoint. And that's basically the arm position plus this vector that we this vector that we found now. So if we do arm position plus the arm wrist scaled, now the pole vector should end up right at the middle here, right on that line. And you see, if we scale this down now, 0.5, that's perfect, right? So what we need to figure out now is basically the vector between these two. So let's just call that midpoint to elbow, right? And as I said, we want to start at the, the last one. So we'll go elbow minus the midpoint. So let's just see if that is making sense as well. I'll get this curve that we have up here and I'll just make sure that I, I put that down to like scale one. So if I set that down here, yep, yeah, that all makes sense. So they're still lining up. Um, so what we want to do now is just make sure that we, that we're actually hitting the elbow position as well, right? So let's just say elbow, you know, midpoint to elbow Ooh. position or let's just call it point equals we'll have to do midpoint plus this vector so let's just call that vec just to be very specific so if we now basically take that midpoint and we add this vector that we found here we should now have the pole vector end up straight at the elbow. And what do you know? It does, right? So now that we've figured out that, we can now basically take that elbow vector that we have and scaled it, right? So we can take this one and we can just say that and scaled equals that times two. And now we should basically, 
if we set this to two as well, we should see our locator end up, oh, sorry, I didn't do that, I think. Oh wait, am um, I, oh yeah, sorry, I wasn't doing the scaled one. There you go. So now for the moment of truth, let's hide these and let's go and make our IK again. Yeah, that's still wrong. So let's say our pole vector, the IK handle, and we'll do our constraint. And what do you know? Perfect. So again, that's a lot of code for, but that's really just going through each and individ each individual step, right? So you can definitely just kind of do this a lot more concise, but. Hopefully this kind of shows you a bit of the power that lies in this in taking out these kind of vectors and being able to scale them like this is really, really powerful because it's not just about ending up at the elbow, but it's what if you want to go past the elbow? Or what if you want to go, you know, backwards and forwards? It's really, really powerful to do these things. And, you know, now you don't have to place pull vectors anymore. You can basically do this in your code. So you could do it in your puppet build. So when you're when you're building your puppet, your code could just do it for you and you're done and it's going to be perfect every single time. And this doesn't matter about like any rotations that you have. It doesn't care about any of that because the only thing that we're looking at is these three points here. We're not looking at any rotation. We don't care about that. We're just caring about the points in space.